Hello, Drew here. I'm out in Obregon Park in East LA and I'd like to read something that I got from Gail Newman from her mother-in-law Lillian Newman. And this is something from the turn of the century on the ideal American mother. Few parents realize how much conditions of childhood have changed within the last 25 years. Opportunities and possibilities are far greater. If in the long ago mothers could develop such characters as Washington and Lincoln, what glorious specimens of manhood the mothers of today should give to the world. Surely then, to mold perfectly a child's life is a woman's highest mission. True, it means suffering, sacrifice, patience, endurance, even sometimes sorrow and heartache. However, to develop your very own character into a beautiful likeness of the Christ Mother and fit your child for a life of usefulness and happiness brings a joy to the human heart such as nothing else can bring. The little child comes into our home without knowledge and perfectly helpless. Naturally, they have implicit confidence in mother and father. Unless this trust is destroyed, parents are perfection in a child's estimation. When a little boy or girl is asked, who do you think the best man or woman in the world is? The answer will invariably be father and mother. To retain this confidence means that you will have a great advantage over all others in influencing your child's life. Your opportunity to mold the character of your little one far surpasses any outside influence your child may come in contact with. Just as the potter molds his clay into the most beautiful and perfect pieces of workmanship, so can you, wise mother, mold your child's life. Could you not find a higher vocation than this? Oh, I think not. It's the sweet confidence of childhood that causes the little ones to come to mother with all their questions. Surely they expect truthful answers. The ideal mother is always honest. She is never too tired or too busy to listen to those things which interest her child. It may be only a tale of grief about Dolly's broken arm, or it may be some trivial remarks about the doggy or birdie. But it means much to the child. If mother doesn't listen, the little heart is broken. The child turns away sadly disappointed. Very often, this is the first seed sown towards lost confidence. One of the most essential requirements of an ideal mother is to keep her child's trust. She is her daughter's best chum and her son's bravest pal. She may have to crowd a great many things out of her life, but she realizes that it's very necessary to have time for her children. Time to be their friend, their confidant, their comrade, and guide. How often a little elbow rests upon your tired knee? How often childish eyes look lovingly up into your own? A sweet gentle voice whispers, Mother dear, I love you. I recall such a picture of my own little girl and boy. Mothers, let us never be too dull and thankless to catch the sunshine till it slips away. Too tired to enjoy such blessings in our life. Maybe sometimes the little one does fret and cling persistently to our gown and that when we are very tired. Maybe a little muddy footprints are on the floor you've just polished. Is that any reason why you should frown and be impatient? No, far better kiss the rosy restless foot and sing the fretful child asleep. Let us keep our singing birdlings in the nest of love. Let them remember mother's smile and not mother's frown. Mother's duties are many. 
she must be cheerful and bright. It is absolutely necessary to the proper development of the child. Did you ever see a child who didn't love the sunshine? Like a flower, they naturally turn towards things bright and beautiful. A tactful mother will reason with her child. She will say, do, not don't. She will put her child first, and yet will do so in such a way as will not cause the little one to grow selfish. The ideal mother's wise is love is wise and tender enough to insist upon obedience. She realizes that it's very hard to acquire in maturity what might have been learned with ease in childhood. Experience is a bitter lesson. Therefore, a certain amount of strictness is necessary to the welfare of the child. A true mother will always be patient. Now, a true mother will always remember that the child is her most precious treasure. Not only hers, but God's, and she will do by the little one as he would have her do. One of the best methods to develop the child's character from an educational standpoint is to always praise an honest effort. The ideal mother lacks down deep into the motive of child life. There's no despair in her heart for the dull child who is a plotter. If a child studies hard and does his best, he should receive encouragement from mother and father. He's laying the proper foundation for future years just as much as the more brilliant student. Wise parents never call their little ones blockheads, know-nothings, or any of the sort. A child naturally tries to live up to the expectations. The ideal mother sets a high standard for her child to reach. I had a college friend who was exceptionally bright. She always won high honors in scholarship and was the pride of her class. Her mind was stronger than her body. Nervous exhaustion was the result. When she reached the real battleground of life, she was broken down and totally unfit to fulfill her place. She never reached the highest goal for womankind, that of being an ideal wife and mother. So let not your heart be troubled about the slower child. Make the most of the talent he has. He may never be a brilliant student, but he may be a famous artist or a musician. Let's praise his efforts. It will encourage him to do his best. Who would have thought that the little boy, Abe Lincoln, so awkward, so homely, and so backward, would have ever attained such eminence? His stepmother's influence to a large extent helped him mold his youthful character. The proper foundation being laid, it's not strange his life was consecrated to human liberty. We know not the destiny of our own child's life. I may be molding the character of a great man or woman. At any rate, the ideal mother so trains her children that when they have grown to manhood and womanhood, they are factors for good, whatever their vocation in life may be. You may say, how can a mother do all those things? It's hard. It means a lot of conscientious thought, a lot of downright common sense, a lot of self-denial, but mothers, it's one of the things in life that really counts. It's something worthwhile. It's time well spent. The ideal mother is sweet and cheerful. She's full of symphony, sympathy, and can understand perfectly all the troubles and griefs of the child's life. She is broad-minded and tries to study child problems from a modern, up-to-date viewpoint. She's never harsh or unjust in her judgment and is far more concerned in the welfare of her own home and children than in other people's personal affairs. Oh, dissents or politics. A home is bereft of its greatest joy when mother is gone. 
I pity the child who knows not what it means to hide under mother's brooding wings or feel a mother's tender arms about them. Undoubtedly, love will do more towards developing the best side of the child's nature than anything else. A mother simply must be gentle and loving. She must create in her child's heart a love for home. It should be the one place above all others where the boy and girl would rather be, truly the sweetest spot. What a sacred memory mother's room is to the child, the place where a fellow could always rest and talk of the things his heart loved best. The ideal mother has such a room, even though it may be very humble indeed. She's ever a friend to her children's comrades. She welcomes them into her home and observes their characters that she may know whether or not they are fit playmates for her own precious little ones. The ideal mother is determined to keep her children's love and confidence. She is determined to keep them near her and to do so she must solve a great problem. She must see that the home offers just as much pleasure to the young boy and girl as the dance hall or the movies. Home nowadays must compete with these things. Parents should go with their children to such picture shows as The Birth of a Nation, Hunting in Africa, etc. Far better to go with them to such movies than have them sneak off and see undesirable pictures. We must remember that a child is full of curiosity. If a young boy or girl insists upon dancing, give them a, mar a party at, uh, of that nature at home. It will satisfy them and they will love and trust mother all the more for her kindness. How natural is it to fondle and caress the baby? But when the boy and girl grow older, when they reach out of childhood, childhood grace, when their feet grow big and their limbs tall, when they're at that most awkward and trying age, then it's the time they are very much in need of mother's love and tenderness. Many a young girl and boy at this age are literally starving for affection. Don't let a barrier come between you and your child at this critical time. Love them as you did when they were a baby. They need it. If we intend to be their companion, we must keep them under our loving wings. I believe strongly in the LTL work for children. In this organization, the lessons of purity and temperance are so instilled in the child's mind that in later years, it proves one of the strongest safeguards against wrongdoing. They are taught never to say, do, or listen to anything they cannot tell mother. Frances Willard signed this pledge when but a small child, and she tells us that herself it was the secret to her happy and useful life, realizing the wonderful blessing it is to be an ideal mother. What a shame to bring little innocent darlings, the most beautiful work of God, into the world and then neglect the little one. What a pity that there are so many married old maids lavishing their love on a pet dog or whatnot instead of having a precious baby to care for. The highest ambition of woman's life should be to someday have a home of her own, to be the cherished wife of a noble man and the ideal mother of a little child. A true mother will instill this ambition into her daughter's nature. She will teach the boy and girl like chastity and purity. Above all, also, she will impress upon their minds the sacredness of the human body. The secret to a happy and useful life is to have a healthy body, a pure mind, and a Christian spirit. Okay. So, that was an essay about the ideal American mother from way back at the turn of the century by Lillian Leslie Newman. So, I don't know what LTL is. And, let's see, at the turn of the century, well, 
who knows? Uh, it's some organization that's long gone, that's for sure. So, this is Drew. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm saying there's certainly some uh, nuggets of wisdom in there. I imagine things will be much better if some people listen to it. Okay. Thanks a lot. This is Drew. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.